Welcome to the Our Little Haven Show, live from First Rule Studios in Brentwood. And now here's our host, Martin Kilcoyne. And welcome in to our little Haven show. Always wanted to host the Tonight Show, the Today Show. This is even better. I'm Martin Kilquin. Thanks for being with us. We know the gala was canceled this year, so we went online. You can enjoy the entire program from the comforts of your own home. OurLittleHaven.org. We're going to raise some money to help this organization that's been helping out kids since 19. 93. You heard the great music. Theo Peoples is here. Theo, thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How long have you been doing this? You hate this question, uh, yeah. I know. I got quick counting after 30 years. Well, you're sounding great, and people around town know that name. Theo Peoples, musical entertainment, and also my sidekick here, Steve, who's got a clipboard, so he's very official. Very official, let me tell you. No, thrilled to be here tonight. This is going to be a really exciting event and a lot of great people, but... Always happy to help out at our little haven. You realize, Steve Faust, you have the clipboard. You get to boss people around, okay? Uh, well, I'm in. Let's That's go. <laughs> and I have to thank our little haven for including me over the years, especially right now, because the question has been, sports guy, no sports, what do you do? I get the chance to actually sit at a desk and host a program. And I've learned something in the Zoom world we're living in, guys, because the camera adds 10 pounds. I'm convinced the computer adds 20, okay? <laughs> that, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We've got a great program lined up. Hopefully you'll sit back, enjoy the program, donate online, ourlittlehaven.org. We've got the Olympic champion, the elegant Jackie Joyner Kersey, JJK, in studio with us. From the defending Stanley Cup champions, the St. Louis Blues, Louie is in the house. We have a mascot on hand. We've got Adam Betts from Family Golf Center. We'll talk a little golf and, of course, some baseball with the legend, the Cardinals legend, the one and only Ozzie Smith is here on the program. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And time now on the Our Little Haven Show. Let's talk some golf. And who better to talk to than Adam Betts from Family Golf and Learning Center. Come on down, Adam Betts. Have a seat here on the, right. the plush setting here. Adam, Thanks welcome aboard. Thanks for Thank being you. here. A little elbow, air, air, a little air elbow from my guy, Adam Betts. Family Golf and Learning Center, and you guys have been running this for a couple of years now. Give me an idea how quiet it was. We know we had the COVID shutdown, and then once that ended, how busy it got. So we were shut down for 47 days through the pandemic, um, and uh, we opened back up on March, or excuse me, May 4th, and it's gangbusters. It's busier than it's ever been. There's a lot of families, a lot of uh, friends, people coming out and hitting balls and practicing and playing, so it's been great. It's a great sport for social distance because my ball's over there. My wife's ball's over exactly. there. I mean, you can get out and spread yeah. around. Did you sense from people, too, they were just dying to get out of the house? I think so. Everybody was looking for an activity. You know, we've put some uh, great safety guidelines and precautions in place to keep the customer and the staff safe, which is great. Um, everybody's social distancing there, and golf is, a, like you said, an activity that you can do and do it safely. All so right, You guys have been, been, been expanding there. Give me an idea, though, for you, how nostalgic since you played there as a kid. Yes, I did. So I love family golf. I have since I was a kid. I learned how to play there. Uh, and so being the owner there now is uh, really, really close to my heart. And the game of golf has been great for me and given me a lot of opportunity in my life. And so we're trying to give, uh, give that back to the community and, and allow people to enjoy it themselves. State champ at Parkway South. Yep. Played college golf at Spring Hill. When did you think, all right, from kicking it around at Family Golf, to think, yeah. hey, you know what, maybe I could actually play a little bit? When, when does that, I'm still waiting for that light bulb to go off. You know, I think uh, my senior year of high school, when we won state, I, I kind of thought that, you know what, I can, I can beat a lot of players that I'm playing up against and uh, wanted to take it to the next level. So I played in college and then went on to a professional career, tried to uh, make it on the tour, fell a little short, and uh, came back and found a love for teaching and a passion for the game um, on the side I am now, teaching and giving people the opportunity to play and enjoy the game more. And for those who haven't been, tucked there, Marshall Road, I'm yep. sure there's the baseball fields right by, right by it. You mentioned right. learning because you're teaching, learning center. How many little kids, how, how little is too soon? Because I think we all want our kid to be Tiger Woods. But. Yeah, I mean, when they're young, you just want to give them the opportunity to get exposed to the game, um, have fun with it. You know, you're, you're trying to instill uh, an interest in the game. 
you want it to be fun. Um, and so really, if they're four, five years old, take them out, have them try to hit it and have some fun with it. It's not getting too serious at that point. Um, it's just all about fun. And what are the changes you guys are doing there? So we're doing a lot. We've, we've improved every, every single thing on the driving range. Um, so our double decker has new mats. We have new uh, heaters and lights at night. Uh, new new golf balls, um, and now the most important and exciting thing that we're doing is the new building. So we have a brand new building, new clubhouse going up, going to open up this fall. Um, we're going to have some indoor practice opportunities and some other things uh, that we're excited to uh, show the golfing community here soon. All right, here's the real question. Yep. How good are you at golf? I've always wondered, you know, we got a golf guy here. Isn't that really the burning question? How good is this guy at golf? Hey, you know, if I, like every golfer, have my good days and my bad days, you know, but... I've got, I've got an idea. How got? about uh, we have a little putting contest? Steve's got props. I didn't know well, we were got doing props. You didn't Absolutely. know there'd be putting involved. I didn't know that. Let's do how about, uh, Let's do how about we set it up and see what we can do? All right. Uh, what's what's the, the challenge here, Steve? What are we so doing? So, you've each got one ball, and we've got a third ball for a playoff ball if we need that. So, oh, I don't we got think a we're going to do that. So, you can get a little read on the green there. My first? Of yeah, course. I'm going to read your line. Okay, here we okay. go. Okay. <laughs> see how it goes let's here. Let's see. Get up behind him. State champion Adam Betts standing over about a. Oh, oh got it. Bro. Got it. All right. This could get interesting. Okay. So right, we'll I roll it back. So, so I you have can to read it. I have to force this to force a force playoff. The playoff. Force the let's playoff. Let's see if you can okay. do it. That's not quite a gimme. Probably no, not no, six footers are not gimme. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's not in the leather. No, All right, I didn't no, really read it. I have to be honest. Haven't played a lot of golf. Need to get to family golf and work on my game. Oh, oh all right. The oh. game was rigged. Good effort. Good <laughs> game was rigged. Adam, thanks for oh. being here. Yeah, thanks for having me very much. Adam Appreciate Betts it. from Bully. Family Golf and Learning Center. How about my guy Theo nailing the music over there? Welcome back. Our little Haven show, and I've always wanted to do this. Jim Nance gets to do it all the time. Hello, friends, and how about some friends of Our Little Haven? Our next guests certainly fall into that category. We welcome in executive board member at Our Little Haven, Risa Zwirling Wrighton, and her husband, Dr. Mark Wrighton, former Washington University Chancellor. Welcome in. Come on down and have a seat. I'm getting used to these studio digs here. I mentioned this. I don't have this kind of space. The sports guy on TV always is squeezed at the end. I got my own desk. I may not leave, but we're happy to have you guys here. And, Risa, your story is really interesting. With Our Little Haven, it began simply by volunteering. Absolutely. Um, about 25 years ago, I felt like I needed to give back to the community. I was blessed with two beautiful, healthy children born into a stable, loving home. And um, I discovered our little haven was taking care of children who were the victims of the, the most severe types of abuse and neglect. So I would go to the haven on Wednesday nights and hold babies and play with toddlers. And it, it actually it was a relief to see the magic that our little haven had towards these children and gave them such a beautiful opportunity to have the same type of a life that children supposed to have. And pretty amazing to see also how the organization, the commitment, and really how it's literally physically grown down there too since you're day one in that building. Oh, absolutely. Over the years, the reach of Our Little Haven has um, grown dramatically. And um, they're, they're in the community to help families who are coping with the worst distressors and challenges that life can really offer. And these are families who need a leg up, and Our Little Haven is there to give them that leg up. And I'm curious, Dr. Wright, and did she come home and say, I, I, this place was really interesting, or it tugs at my heart. I, you've probably heard her talk about it a lot over the years. Reese has been extremely committed to our little haven, and as I've come to interact with the leadership, this is an extremely great organization. Scott and Kathleen Hummel have been fabulous as leaders, and they've encouraged many other people to support our little haven and I'm an enthusiastic supporter of Risa and everything that she wants to do. And it's such a serious issue, yet they seem to have such a fun atmosphere. You know what, it's, it's hard to explain that to people, but what's taking place is very serious, it's very real. Yet anytime you're at an event or even this show, it's, they keep it kind of light. It's, it's interesting how they balance that. Well, you know, they give, they give these children and family hope, and that, that's a happy thing. And uh, it's just amazing 
to me to, well, it's actually a, <clears throat> a relief to know that when you're, <clears throat> that there are agencies out there that can provide this type of assistance to families. And it is, it's a place of hope and hope is always a happy thing. And as you know, Our Little Haven, they love trivia at Our Little Haven. I've hosted that event many times. You're a board member. Our guy, our director, Steve, is a board member. You guys want to do, how about some trivia? I'll ask the questions. Uh, I think that would be a great idea, but since Reese has been a board member much longer than I have, I think I'd like to bring in my designated hitter to compete here, if you don't mind. Wait, he's got a proxy. Hold on. This guy is <laughs> Kathleen available. Wait a minute. He's got a ringer, I believe. Definitely. And here she is. <laughs> oh, Kathleen Hubble, this is this is going down to the wire, folks. People who know our I'm little haven, my heavy hitter, inside and out. All right, the trivia contest going to the next level. All right, so this is getting serious now. I've got my grease boards to hand out. Risa, here is Thank yours. You. Kathleen Hummel, the ringer in all yeah. of this, co-founder of our little haven. I'm sure Steve knew what he was doing here when he handed over the reins. Love it. So we have trivia here. We have four questions. Okay. And this would be a little bit, you know, like the t to tell the truth back in the day for the old school folks. First question, what year was Our Little Haven founded? Ooh, gee, let's see. Okay, thinking, thinking. You guys may both lose your position on the board if you don't. Risa with 1993 is correct. Kathleen, 1993 is correct. <laughs> one for one. All right, number two. How many children and families have been positively impacted by Our Little Haven? What is that number? Children and families positively impacted. Over 20,000. It's really unfair because there's two over there. And one, although she's the he, co-founder. He's, he's my executive okay. assistant. He's merely writing down. He's your Siri over there. You're just telling him what to write. <laughs> All right, they have their answer. Kathleen is still scribbling. This is when Alex Trebek would mock the guest. <laughs> very, very many is not correct, but 20,000 plus is over 20,000. Oh, look at this. It's a dead heat. It's now two. <laughs> Or two. Third question. Name the three programs offered to kids and families at Our Little Haven. So it's a three-parter. The three programs offered to kids and families at Our Little Haven. Okay. Our right. Little Academy. Looks like they know the answer. Right. Like Kathleen knows the, the answer. Family Center. I wonder if there's a prize being and handed out at the end here. Do we know? Three programs offered to kids and families. All started in 1993. If you're watching, go to ourlittlehaven.org for more information. Kathleen's finished writing, yes. No, no extra points, by the way. And you can speak if you'd like to as oh, well. Oh, great, okay, <laughs> wonderful. She's married to Scott, she's not allowed to talk very often. <laughs> what, what are your answers, Kathleen? I have Our Little Academy, Taylor Family Care, Center, Center, yeah. Keystone, and of course, I put medical case management too because that's very important. Yes. Those are the correct answers. And Risa and Doctor, what do we have okay. here? Okay. Our Little Academy, the Taylor Family Care Center, and Keystone Mental Health Services. Wow. So we are going down to the wire. Will there be a winner declared? The fourth and final question here trivia. How many Our Little Haven trivia nights have I hosted? I honestly don't know the answer, so I'm looking forward to finding out the answer here. How many Our Little Haven trivia nights have I hosted? It's always in January. It's always the weekend before the Super Bowl. It's a nice clean slate on the sports calendar, unless the NHL All-Star game happens to be in town, which happened this past year. So the winning answer is, let's see. Kathleen says 11 or 12. <laughs> Wait a minute. 11 is the correct answer. Kathleen is taken down by Risa here, <laughs> the new trivia champion oh, of the first God. ever Our Little Haven show. Dr. and Risa, congratulations. The trophy awaits in the green room, I can only assume. Thank you. Thanks for being here, guys. My pleasure. Any time to talk about Our Little Haven. And Kathleen, thanks to you for Thank being you. here as well. Thank you. Better luck Thank next you, time. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks for being here. Thank you. you can be what you want to be. We ain't got no responsibility. Everybody's gonna be free. And now, time for an Olympic legend joining us on the program. Much to talk about. A six time medalist, a three time gold medalist, the pride of East St. Louis, the one, the only, Jackie Joyner Kersey, JJK. Come on down. Voted by Sports Illustrated, the greatest female athlete of all time. <laughs> Jackie, great to see you. 
do I call you, and I've known you for a long time, but does anybody call you JJK or does anybody call you Jack or is it a split down the middle? <laughs> you we know, should have handled uh, this in pre-production, right? <laughs> but that's okay. What do you prefer? Jackie's fine you or JJK. It doesn't matter. People Whatever call you both, don't yes, they? Yes. And people may not know this. <laughs> you were named after. Yeah, Jacqueline Kenny Onassis, yeah. Your parents First were? First lady, my uh, grandmother, great-grandmother wrote on the back of my baby picture. One day, she'd be first lady or something. <laughs> yeah. no, but your grandma suspected big things from you, and she was right. E yes, you know, the wisdom and uh, just knowing how important, you know, family is and someone uh, at birth, you know, not just someone, you know, my great-grandmother being able to write that on the back of a picture. I, I mean, I laugh about it because it's like, oh. <laughs> and, you, and we mentioned the medals, six Olympic medals, three times gold medal, when you won your first, did you think this is life changing? Did you know the rest of my life is now different? You know, um, not really, because it, it was a dream to make the Olympic team and going through that process and making my first team, not realizing how much it takes more than just the physical, the mental. You got to have the total package and never been injured before and going into the 84 Olympic Games and having a hamstring injury. I focused so much on what was wrong, not focus on what I needed to do to become victorious. But I came away with a silver medal, you know, and I mean, that's OK. But when you got the ability to be an Olympic champion, you know, I look back on it and just said that if God blessed me to make another Olympic team, I want to be the a toughest one out there mentally because physically I knew I had the ability to do it and my team had me ready but I just didn't believe I was ready because my leg was heavily bandaged. What's the moment like when they're playing the music and you've got the medal and you're standing on the platform and when you're the gold medalist you're on the top of the platform? You know uh, as athletes you know you know we take on this exterior like we're so tough and I'm like, be standing up there proud you know not going to cry and oh my gosh you know people ask you about do you feel the pressure I'm like oh no I don't feel no pressure but it's amazing how much your shoulders and everything is the weight is off you and then you start thinking as they playing the national anthem and all of a sudden I'm thinking about all the people who believed in me, who saw the potential in me that I did not know that I had, and, and just tears just start rolling down. You know, even as I'm standing there, I'm trying to, like, don't cry, but you can't control it. <laughs> even more meaningful for you, coming from East St. Louis and wanting to send a message to the young kids back there, too, that great things are possible. Oh, yes. You know, uh, to me, uh, East St. Louis is home, and there's so many great people, you know, that's there, and that's also trying to encourage uh, all of us to be the best that we could be and going to Seoul Korea and being a uh, double goal and being able to uh, hold the sign up in Seoul Korea and the closing ceremonies to send a message back home that I love you East St. Louis to let them know no matter how far away I am you know home is always home and so wherever I go I always think of East St. Louis. Yeah, and you're doing great work the community center there you've got a foundation you know, a lot of people achieve success. You could just kind of go off and hide or play golf or do whatever you, <laughs> you know, play in the garden. But you're very active and you're in the community. Why is that so important? You know, because I came up through a community center and uh, when my parents couldn't afford for me to go to different events, uh, coaches like Nino Fanoi, who is still in the community, instrumental in uh, trying to set young people on the right path of connecting student athletes to go to college and, and just be the best that we could be. So I was taught at a very young age to give back. Volunteer at that time was a real big word, but uh, for me, that's why the Jackie Joyner Kersey uh, Center means so much to me, but also to the community, being able to do our after school program, being able to go pick our students up from school and take them home, serve hot meals, and, and, and give them enrichment and empower them to be what we call our signature program, Winners in Life, the JJK. We have a curriculum around character and, and, and leadership, but social responsibility. I always know how to embarrass Jackie. All I have to do is talk about the Sports Illustrated greatest female athlete of all time. And we probably don't mention it enough. You're a great basketball player at UCLA, one of their great players of all time. Did you ever think, I wonder if, you know, it worked out pretty well on the Olympic side, but you, you could have played some pro ball, couldn't you, on basketball? You know what? Uh, for whatever reason, you know, when you're young, you think you don't have the height. So I'm, I was like, I didn't even know if I was going to play at UCLA because I just thought I was, you know, too short. You know, you got 6'4", six, 6'5", six, girls. And not knowing that, you know, I was jumping out the gym and then I had the quickness to check anybody. So, uh, you know, my, my love is, uh, was always track and field and I wanted to make the team 
you know, and basketball is, is so subjective, you know, and, but I think we have had great women to represent us in, in the basketball U.S. Olympic team, so, you know, my space was my space. <laughs> You're such a humble champion. I'm, I'm the guy who would wear the gold medal to the grocery <laughs> store and just kind of walk around and see if anybody notices, where do you keep the medals? And do you ever, I mean, do you have people over, just put it on every once in a while? And <laughs> you know what? I don't, you don't realize, you know, those medals are old. <laughs> so you know what I mean? I'm old. <laughs> you know, you put them on, they're like, oh, but no, you know, um, I lost my dad uh, a year ago and he was keeping them. And, and now, you know, I do do show and tell, like I go into schools and, you know, I, I really uh, tease the, you know, the young kids, like this medal is older than you, and I'm <laughs> telling you, you know, but uh, no, I don't wear them around like jewelry. You know, but I do look at them every now and then to remind me about uh, it's not so much winning the medals, but the commitment to hard work, you know, and, and having a dream and working hard to see that dream become a reality. The great JJK, your grandma was right. She knew you were going to do great things. <laughs> no. Jackie joyner Kersey, call her either. Um, one of the greats in our town. Thanks for everything you do in the community. Thanks for helping us out today. Our little haven, very appreciative having you here because they've been helping folks in the community and it's really whether you're on East St. Louis or in St. Louis it's a collaborative effort isn't it? Exactly and it takes all of us and whenever I can lend a helping hand and I love Haven I'm glad to be a part of this and whatever I can do to support and so whoever if you're out there listening lend us the support because we need it. The Olympic legend with us Jackie Joanna Kersey. We're coming right back here on the Our Little Haven show. Oak Tree Products and Bob and Margie Kemp are proud to support Our Little Haven a leader in early intervention services. Serving over 500 children and families annually, Our Little Haven cares for children and families, mind, body, and soul. Congratulations, Our Little Haven, on the Our Little Haven show. Buongiorno from Pietro's Restaurant. We are honored to be a long-standing supporters of Our Little Haven. From John and Marianne Ivaldi and our wonderful team at Pietro's, we wish everyone healthy and happiness. Bon appetito! From Matt and Mary Strobel and everyone at Lipic Engagement, we are proud to be a partner with Our Little Haven and help recognize the amazing team and their work in our community. Well done on the Our Little Haven show, and we hope everyone enjoys the evening. From our team at Katie Charles Communication, thank you to Our Little Haven for being a long-standing partner. We are proud to help Our Little Haven spread their message and mission to our community. Theo Peoples is proud to share his time and talents with Our Little Haven during the Our Little Haven show. We hope everyone is having a good time tonight. Thank you for joining us. At Family Golf and Learning Center, we offer a driving range, golf lessons, and a par three course. Construction is almost complete on our state-of-the-art golf facility with over 12,000 square feet of space to work on your golf game. We are proud supporters of our little haven and thank our golf community for sharing their support with this worthy local organization. Greetings from the Goodman family and everyone at Enterprise Bank and Trust. From our family to yours, thank you for your continued support of Our Little Haven. We hope everyone enjoys the show as we strive to share our mission with the community we all love. Uh, thanks to all of our great sponsors. Good to hear from the Pietros folks as well. They have been longtime supporters of our little haven, but also serving up great food over there on Watson. And the show rolls on, and right now, really interesting resume here. We're talking about somebody who is a board member on the Board of Trustees, but also a social worker himself. Let's bring in Anthony Bedford. Anthony Bedford, come on down, our next guest. <laughs> Welcome in. Good to see you. Thank you a for lot to get me. to. I've heard a lot of good things about you. Uh, yes. But your role, social worker, Lutheran Children and Family Services. Talk a little bit about what you do on a daily basis and how much you're interacting with Our Little Haven. So I kind of work hand in hand with Our Little Haven as one of the partnering agencies, Lutheran Family and Children's Services. I'm a family case manager and I work with families, parents, and children uh, that have been removed from the home. And I work to reunify them with the parents once they have been removed due to abuse and or neglect. I, done, I did something here what in the news business we call burying the lead. You're also an alum of Our Little Haven, a proud alum, uh, went through the program, and now here you are going back. What an unbelievable story. Yeah, yeah, it's truly been a life-saving life story, I would have to say. And I um, actually noticed that you have a cookie jar here, and it's 
quite amazing, the amazing story uh, about this cookie jar. So because services provided by Our Little Haven are very complex, emotional, and complicated, these services are very simplified through an easy example of a cookie jar. Our Little Haven believes that when we're born, God gives us a cookie jar, and with each positive experience, every hug, each high five, every success, we get a cookie in our cookie jar. At about 10 years old, the, which is about the ending of the formative years, our cookie jar gets sealed up. And with, we, with that, we have like just nurtures, it nurtures us. So the rest of our lives now, most of our cookie jars are pretty much full. So the Haven kids' jars are empty. It's an honor to fill them, community kids and those cookie jars. So, you know, Martin, it doesn't get any simpler than that. That was a great <laughs> job. It's a great story, but also a great job by you. Thank I'm, you. I'm just... I mean, it's an amazing story. Are you emotional when you go back in the building, when you see the work that's still being done, the thousands of kids? Is it, it's got to be extremely meaningful. People have jobs that they love and they do because they're passionate about. This has to all be extremely meaningful. It truly is, and it actually enriches me every time I walk back into the Haven to know that the work that was done back when I was in the Haven is still going on now and today. Um, the Haven is just about as old as I am. So I'm 26 years old and it's still going and they're still changing, changing lives, mind, body, and soul, every child and every family at a time. Now we should have warned you when you came onto this show, we have a lot of moving parts, we have <laughs> props, we have music, and then yes. Theo's raising his hand. Yes, Theo, you have a question. <laughs> I, I heard this guy can sing. No, wait a minute. Is it you, we got a singer here? Amongst <laughs> yes. your talents, you can sing. <laughs> yes, it is one of the main talents. All right. Well, Theo's not messing around. Looks like you've got an invitation. Let's see All what right. you got here. Okay. This is a true variety show. <laughs> We've got singing, audience participation, guest participation. What are we gonna do over there? Oh. I've got sunshine. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day When it's cold outside I've got the month of May Hey, I guess you say What can make me feel this way? my girl talking about my girl my girl Ooh. all right we need the live studio audience <laughs> put them together thank you thank you what an amazing job so thank many you. talents here but i've since you've got the mic, why don't you handle our next introduction? Yeah, so I had the amazing opportunity of meeting an amazing little guy backstage by the name of Thomas. And like me, uh, Thomas and his mom, Tanya, were also served uh, through the services being offered by All Little Haven. Welcome in, Thomas, Tanya, guys, thanks for being here. Thank you. You're our youngest guest on the show today, Thomas. Because you're our youngest guest and because we have a great <laughs> crack staff, we have some research here. I got you a little friend here, Louie. We all love Louie here at our little haven. That's the blues mascot. You like Thank Louie? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. He's kind of a superhero, isn't he? Mm-hmm. A little yep. bit. Tanya, thanks for being here as well. You guys have a great short story to share, and that's really a lot of what we're doing today, is sharing stories. Let's talk about how Our Little Haven impacted your life. Sure. Well, first off, if I can tell them, thank you. Um, we're super excited to be here. We, uh, from the day that the adoption happened, we wanted to tell them thank you, and we didn't know how. And this is a perfect platform. So, so you mentioned adoption. Let's, let's tell people the story, how this sure. all began. He's a, actually a distant family member of mine. And with social media and everything, I, I, hadn't, I knew that he had been born. And with the postings and stuff, I thought, oh gosh, you know, such a cute, precious baby, you know. But went on with my day, a couple of days, didn't really hear anything about it. And I was driving home from work and my mom called me and she said, can you please come down to your sister's house? Okay, I knew something, it was urgent. So I, I got down there, my, Chris, my sister's crying, my mom's crying. And like we have the situation and 
we need you to go down to the hospital, you know, and they, and they explained everything, the details, and um, I was scared to death, and I was like, well, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go help this little guy, you know, we, at the time, I didn't know the story, how it was going to end, um, I knew that he needed us, and uh, we had nothing in the way of bringing home a baby, literally, I was still in my, my work vehicle, and uh, Went down to the hospital, didn't get to meet him yet, just all the formalities. Um, we, we actually, the first person we met was uh, Mariah from Our Little Haven, and she kind of explained to us what's going on, this is what's going to happen, you know, are you in for this? And I kind of got overwhelmed and was like, yeah, let's do this, you know, regardless, whatever happens. Adoption at that point was not even going through our heads. And uh, brought him home. We had about 10 trips to Walmart that night. <laughs> <laughs> um, our little haven, I believe they were at our house till like 2 o'clock in the morning. And still, you know, we're thinking, okay, well, we're just taking this baby in. You know, it's just going to be for a couple of weeks. It's not something that we're gonna, you know, we didn't know where. We knew, we knew we were gonna make it work. And uh, as time went on, and we went through all the, the meetings and um, the, whole, the whole process, we realized this was gonna move to a permanent situation. And I can tell you that where I was standing the day I fell in love with him and I remember looking in his eyes and saying, you're my son. And from that day forward, we just, uh, we kind of battled everything together. And by that, I had to, um, I had to accept the fact and be okay with the fact that he could go back to his parents. And I was okay with that because if that's what was best for him. And I told myself every single day, I'll never regret saying yes. And I knew every day that we had him, we were making a difference. <laughs> He's a keeper. God, yeah, look at you too on the cover of the magazine and sharing your story, an inspirational story. And really it's, it's another example too, though, of Arlo Haven making it happen and making a difference. It's such a trite phrase, but for you guys, it's real, isn't it? it very real. And that, that day was amazing. Um, we, of course, as a family decided to dress up as, you know, in our Superman and everyone we invited, including everyone from our little haven, dressed up in Superman. So when we rounded the corner to go into the courtroom, I just seen a sea of like Superman shirts and I was like, wow, you know, we walked in as a, as a family and we tackled it together and it was the best day of our lives for all of our my family, my friends, the energy was amazing. Like everybody from our little haven was high-fiving us and hugging us. And at that time, we all became one big family. You know, our little haven, you know, our family, our friends. And it was such a victory for all of us. It looks like, Thomas, you've, you've gone to Metropolis, I believe. You've seen the big Superman. Maybe mom or you can explain it. What, why superheroes? What do you love about Superman? You want me to tell him? Yeah. Is he your superhero? Yeah. You like superheroes, right? Yeah. Who else do you like? Superman? Superman. And Spider-Man? Ooh. Yeah. Good. But and Superman, is Superman number one, though? He's your favorite? Yeah. He's your favorite. Why is he your favorite? Because. 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 I get it. I get it. And I'm guessing mom at home, there's probably a few few uh, mementos and toys that are superhero related, right? Yes, absolutely. This is actually <laughs> the one he took into the courtroom that day. And we've had it ever since. He's played with it for a while, but I, I keep trying to take it and kind of put it up so <laughs> we have it. But uh, we, we had to get it down today. I guess this is like our little nervous. But <laughs> this is our, our strength, isn't it? This Thomas, is our bond. Have you, have you been on TV before, Thomas? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you have. Okay, well then oh. never mind. I got one too. <laughs> I do have one too. Well, Tanya, Thomas, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank and, you. And people can find out more online, as always, at our little haven. Once a one room shack slept another gym beside me. Uh, we're rolling along here on the Our Little Haven show. And now, not just hockey, but a Stanley Cup champion in our midst here in the studio has the ring to prove it from your St. Louis Blues, the one and only Louis. Louis is here. Come on down, Louis. Great to see you. Great. Look, by far, our biggest guest on the show. That's a distinction. When Scott Hummel was sitting there earlier, you still win the prize. Welcome. Look at that ring. Let me see that ring there. That is a championship ring. It is so great to have Louie here with us. I have so many questions to ask you. I have so much to get to. The Blues are great in the community. I uh, have always been really involved in the community. G give me a really a profound thought on why that matters so much to you guys. Oh, maybe... It's mics on. Okay, mics on. Oh, Louis. Oh, Louis doesn't talk. No, what? Martin, hold on. I, I think I got. I think I got this here for you. Oh, you got, we got cue cards. Try okay, this. Louis. You. Oh, you're still not gonna. Okay. Thanks, Martin. The Blues do so much for our community, just like all my friends at our little haven. Well, perfect answer. Well done, Louis. This is great to have Louis here again. So many questions, so few answers. But wait. I think we've got one more surprise guest. We've got guest. a surprise for Or Louis. two more surprise guests. We've got Sarah and Sammy. Come on down. Louis, you get a get you get gifts. Yes. Louie, we heard you were gonna be here, so we wanted to give you give you a gift. Yeah, I know. Open it up. Let's see if it fits. We've been missed seeing you at all I the know. games. We hope that it's the right size. <laughs> <laughs> he rips through that gift. Oh, it uh, might be a, a little, little small. small. I don't know. Maybe you oh. can give it to Barkley. You know, every dog needs a shirt. That's a, you know, it's it, perfect for Hey, him. it's okay. The COVID, we all put on a little extra weight. It's yeah. okay, Louie. Don't feel bad. <laughs> well, I, no offense. It's the camera adding. Uh, Sarah Hummel and Sammy Maurer are with Series 6, the apparel company. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Series 6 is a St. Louis apparel company that focuses on everything there is to love about St. Louis. So from local sports teams like the Blues right here to focusing on um, local food and drink and restaurants and just everything that there is to love about the city of St. Louis. So where do people find out information about Siri? They get one that fits them. <laughs> Louis, we'll, get you, we'll, we'll get Louis one that fits. Where do they find out more information? Yeah, so Siri6company.com um, is our website that has all the information um, on our company and the shirts that you can find and then we participate in a ton of different local events in the area and sell at some different boutiques. Very cool. Series 6 stopping by, bringing the gifts and Louie, uh, in your own words, how much fun is it to be a Stanley Cup champion? <laughs> oh, it's exhausting, <laughs> it's exhilarating all in one. A picture says a thousand words. The Stanley Cup champion, let me pound that ring there. Like, oh, <laughs> Stanley Cup champion, Louie's here. Series 6 is here, and when we come back, how about this? The Cardinals legend, the Hall of Famer, Ozzie Smith, is our next guest on the show. On behalf of the Our Little Haven Board of Trustees, thank you for watching tonight, and thank you for your continued support of Our Little Haven. The Board of Trustees is proud to lend our time to this worthy organization. Thank you to our St. Louis community. Packaging Concepts, John and Sandy Iris, wish the team and leadership of Our Little Haven all the best on the Our Little Haven show. Congratulations on the creation of a successful alternative to our favorite Haven event, the Gala. Looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Well done, our little haven. From Steve and Marianne Faust and all of us at Icon Mechanical, congratulations, our little haven, on the Our Little Haven Show. Wishing all of our friends at the haven our honored gratitude for serving so many children and families in the St. Louis region. The Klug family wishes everyone watching an enjoyable evening enjoying the Our Little Haven Show. 
We are enjoying the great lineup and seeing our community share their time and talents with this amazing local organization. Enjoy the show, everyone, and thank you for your support. And From the entire team at Our Little Haven, thank you for watching tonight. It is a pleasure to work with many children and families in our community. Thank you for helping us fill those cookie jars. Pack a picnic and join us at Noble Ice Winery this summer. Spread a blanket and enjoy the beautiful views at Noble Ice Vineyards in Augusta. Cheers to our friends at Our Little Haven, and we hope everyone enjoys the Our Little Haven show. Don and Ellen Veter here. We are enjoying the show and hope you are too. Congratulations, Our Little Haven, on 27 years of caring for children, mind, body, and soul. We are grateful to the St. Louis community for supporting Our Little Haven through the years and now as they work to continue serving our community under different circumstances. Keep up the great work, Our Little Haven. And now the show rolls on. We've got royalty in the house. We've got the Hall of Famer, the Cardinals Hall of Famer, the Cooperstown Hall of Famer, a 15-time All-Star, a 13-time Gold Glove winner. He needs no introduction, but we could give it for hours because he's that special to St. Louis. The Cardinals legend, Ozzie Smith, joining us. Let's welcome the wizard here to the studios of the Our Little Haven Show. Ozzie Smith, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. There he is. Good to How see you, my man. You? Nobody right. makes an entrance like the wizard, okay? <laughs> Ozzy, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. And I got to tell you, we made the invitation. I said, hopefully he'll join us. We're having some fun. You know, the, the gala was supposed to be a gathered of big people. Right. Now we go online. That's the world we're living in. And they said, do you think Ozzy will do it? I said, I know he'll do it if he's available. And I've been to Cooperstown. I've seen some of the old timers walking around. Eh, maybe they'll give you an autograph. He's walking up and down the street, signing for everybody. Uh, give me an idea, just your charitable spirit. I mean, I see it at every event. And well, you know, it's, it's where I live, you know, and uh, if the town's going to be better, you got to be part of it. You know, excuse my hair, you know. This is, uh, it's the COVID look, okay? COVID look. I told you earlier, I've been told for years I should be wearing a mask, and it had nothing to do with infectious disease, okay? No, but it's, uh, it's always been important to me to, to be able to give back. It's one of the things that my mom taught me at an early age that uh, the, one of the most important things in life is the ability to give back, you know. So uh, being a part of this community since 1982, I just uh, I feel a responsibility. When you were traded to the Cardinals, did you think, oh, I'll be there for the next 40 years. It's going to be my home. I'm gonna, I mean, what did well, you think was going to happen? <laughs> you never know. You never know. Uh, you wanted it to be a good experience. You know, uh, and the, the fact that I had gotten traded, I thought I was going to be in San Diego for the rest of my life uh, with, with weather and all, but that didn't happen. So, you know, you learn that, hey, anything is possible. So, um, you know, you just take it one day at a time, do the very best you can, um, give where you can, and uh, that's what I've done. You know, I mentioned the gold gloves, but I have a feeling, and we've talked a lot over the years, but we've never really gotten into the fact you became a really good hitter. And you could have been a great big leaguer, just known for the glove. Did that always kind of drive you to say, listen, I'm not just a guy with a great glove. Was that a motivating no, factor? No, no. I, I've always, I always wanted to be as well-rounded a player as I could be. Unfortunately, sometimes when you come in, if there's one thing that you do better than the other, that's the thing that kind of stands out. But for me, defense was the thing that stood out. But I continued to work hard to, to make myself a better offensive player because I knew I could be a better offensive player once I had an understanding and um, had a feeling for what it was that I was trying to accomplish. So I just continue to work at it. It's, it's what I tell kids all the time, that you only get out of it what you put in. So I put my time, my effort in, and there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of calluses, a lot of, lot of time spent in the batting cage. And um, even being the fielder that I was, I still spent a lot of time fielding ground balls every day uh, because I never wanted to leave the game feeling that um, I left something out there that I didn't give my all every day, you know. So um, I worked hard at it, and it, it all paid off in the end. And your greatest moment at the plate, of course, 1985, Game 5, NLCS. Go crazy, folks. You beat the Dodgers on the home run. How many times have you seen that video? I would have it on a loop over the mantle. Hey, come on in, everybody. Look at this. You, know, you can't most, avoid it, can you? Know, most people will think that I only hit 28 home runs in my career. But looking at it as many times as I've seen that as Donald, but it's like I've hit 500. 
You know, but uh, that, that instance that day, you know, uh, the great Jack Buck um, just happened to be on the, on the call. And it's one of those moments in times that, you know, even to this day, people remember what they were doing, where they were, and um, most Cardinal fans at the ballpark. But uh, they, they talk about the fact that the stadium moved that day. And um, for me, it, it moved because it was that day that people started looking at me as much more than just a defensive player. And when you got to Cooperstown, is there a moment where you say all the work, all being a little kid, playing, you know, practicing by yourself out there, throwing that ball against the curb, did, did you say it all paid off? Yeah, I, I mean, it was really surreal, you know, because when you're sitting up there, when you're standing there and you're giving your speech and you look back and there's Aaron, there's Mays, there was McCovey was there, Koufax, all the people that I watched when I was growing up are now guys that uh, – I'm considered one of those guys. I never considered myself a, a Hall of Famer when I was growing up. That was not something that, uh, that I even thought about, really. I just wanted to be a good big league ball player because those guys are on a different level. And, and so, you know, when I had a chance to, to now stand up there and say I, I'm a Hall of Famer, it's just, uh, it, it was a surreal. It was a great feeling. It was a great feeling of accomplishment. And the same high school as Eddie Murray, correct? Yeah, yeah. Same year or same? Yeah, uh, Eddie. I'm imagining these reunions. Like, hey, I'm a big leaguer. Oh, he is. <laughs> You're ruining it. I'm in the Hall of Fame. So am I. Like, <laughs> Eddie, uh, we both graduated in 73, but Eddie got drafted. I never got drafted out of high school, so I had to go to school. I went to a little small school in Central California called Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo, and I didn't get drafted until uh, 1977 when I was playing semi-pro baseball in a little small town uh, called Clarinda, Iowa. And uh, the Detroit Tigers uh, drafted me in the uh, fourth round, and they offered me um, they offered in the eighth round, and they offered me eighty five hundred dollars. And I felt that if I didn't get ten grand, they weren't going to take a real good look at me. And I was a junior in high in college, and I told my mom I was going to get my education. So I went back to school in in hopes of getting drafted again my senior year, which I did by the San Diego Padres. And being a good businessman that I am, I signed for five thousand dollars and a bus ticket to Walla Walla, Washington, where I started my professional career. Great advice for the kids at home. <laughs> and we've got you in the background here flipping through the air. My final thought would be, when did that start? When was the At least even before a game, when did you say, I'm, I'm going to do it out on the playing field? Well, you know, it kind of started in spring training in 1978. Uh, we had to run two miles after we finished practicing, and uh, I wasn't for long-distance running. So I was near the back of the pack, and I was with Gaylord Perry, Raleigh Fingers, uh, Dave Winfield, and they gave me a hard time about being the young guy at the back of the pack. So to show them that I wasn't tired, I did my round off backflip. Now Gene Tennis, who was a teammate, had girls that were involved in gymnastics, and he wanted me to show them at some point during the season that I could do it. And uh, we were never able to do it, so the final day of the season, which was Fan Appreciation Day, he and the PR guy thought it would be a good idea for me to do it going out to my position. I did it. People loved it so much. Uh, they asked me to do it opening day the following year, and lo and behold it a trademark was uh, was born part of the legend of ozzy smith and note to people if you're having a charitable event don't say hey ozzy do a fun do a flip unless you're ready to dig into your wallet because i've been with him <laughs> That's it. And he says you want me to do a flip i, I learned to use checkbook. it yes that is the I way to, to do it. it ozzy thanks for all you do in st louis and thanks for coming by and helping out our little haven's been around since 1993 it's a great organization we appreciate your support all right thank you thanks for having me hi i'm sammy with series six a local apparel company whether you're going to a local sporting event, drinking local beer, or going around St. Louis with your pup, we have the perfect shirt for you. Visit Series6Company.com. Greetings from Dan and Andrea Tarlis and the Tarlis family. We all wish our little haven the best. Your work in our community is valuable, and we are thrilled to support this amazing organization. Enjoy the show, everyone. God has given us many gifts, the least of which are health and prosperity. As a family, we would like to share these gifts through deeds and good works. The great people at Our Little Haven provide a vehicle to do this. Julie and I would like to thank everyone at Our Little Haven for including us in their grand mission. God bless from the Wagner family. Jerry Adams is proud to support Our Little Haven, a longtime volunteer and board member. Jerry wishes all his friends at Our Little Haven all the best, hoping everyone is safe and well. And a hello to my special friends, Kathleen and Scott. Looking forward to seeing everyone again soon. Great job, our little haven. Bombora and Corn Bomb are premium Australian vodkas, but not like any other vodkas you've had before. 
We produce our vodkas from some of the finest grapes in the world, sourced from Australia's premier wine regions. We do this because we believe Australian grapes deliver a very smooth, pure, and exquisite tasting vodka. Inspired by the top wine distillers, we work hard to carefully extract all the flavors from the grapes by distilling the vodka 10 times. It is this masterful attention to detail that allows us to deliver to you Australia's best tasting and award-winning premium vodkas. Distilled from grapes, gluten-free, bombor, and corn bond vodkas. Take a trip with every sip. Congratulations to everyone at Our Little Haven for serving the St. Louis community. Congrats on 27 years of service and our best wishes for the Our Little Haven show from the Dan and Mary Charles family. Hi, Our Little Haven friends from the Barkovsky family. We're looking forward to the Our Little Haven show. We are proud to be a part of the Our Little Haven as they care for children and families, mind, body, and soul. Greetings from the Mager family. We are all wishing to our friends at Our Little Haven much success on the Our Little Haven show. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your support of the children and families that are helped each and every day. From Glenn and Maureen Heitman and the entire Heitman family, thank you to Our Little Haven and best wishes on the Our Little Haven show. We are honored to be part of the mission and support the incredible staff as they support and serve so many children and their families. Cheers to the Our Little Haven show and to 27 years. Up in the way, clown down. You can be what you want to be. Clown down. You ain't got no responsibility. Clown down. Everybody's going to be free. Oh, clown And welcome back. What a great show it's been. So much fun. So many great stories, laughs, tears. We've had it all on our Little Haven show. We thank you for tuning in. And there's something we should point out. March 1st marked the 27th anniversary of the founding of Our Little Haven. Scott and Kathleen Hummel had this vision to help. Well, we thank you for your attention. We thank them for their vision and what they've been able to do in the community. So without further ado, let's hear from Scott and Kathleen. We want to thank you, our community, for watching our Little Haven show in the midst of the virus crisis and our community unrest. We're honored with your continued support and your willingness to help these special children and families. For over 27 years, Our Little Haven has served vulnerable children and families because of your consideration. And we've grown from serving 30 children to over 500 kids and their families each year. We are proud of the dedicated Our Little Haven team who have remained steadfast in their efforts to help many children and our support staff who has successfully adjusted how they do their work. Through these peculiar times, our team has worked with kids and families through video chats, phone calls, and what we have affectionately began calling porch visits. Last week, our dedicated team began the process of inviting the community back to our Little Haven. With the help of our leadership, we now have protocols in place to assure the health and safety of our staff, the children, their families, and our community. We hope tonight's program helped express our thanks for the community support. Special thanks to Martin Kilcoyne for agreeing to lead us through this crazy adventure and for hosting tonight's show. And we thank our very special guests, those who helped us care for a bunch of kids and families who otherwise wouldn't have the support and treatment they need for those who help us fill those cookie jars, and for all those who share their time and talents with our little haven. Thank you for watching. God bless and have a great night. What a great message from Scott and Kathleen who have become good friends over the years. I appreciate the invites from our little haven. I'm just so glad to be connected to all the great work they're doing. I appreciate everyone going online. If you have friends who didn't see the video, have them click at ourlittlehaven.org and find out more about how they can get involved. I want to thank the entire crew here, everybody at the First Rule Studios, Captiva Marketing, my sidekick Steve gets a special shout out, Theo on the music over here, the great job that he's been doing, and of course we had Louis the Bear, Ozzy Smith, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, we've had Adam Betts, Anthony Bedford, Thomas and Tanya, Reese's Whirling Wrighton, Series 6, so many wonderful guests, it's been a great program, and we look forward to seeing all of you in person, real soon. Yeah.